I'm glad I had these two subs. I really, really, I really, really need to make this video right here. Because this video is going to conquer and destroy a myth that a lot of people have. And that is people judging subwoofers by the size of the subwoofer. Some people think that they can look at a subwoofer and tell, well, if that one's bigger than that one, then it's going to do more. And this right here, this proves it. And I'm going to use two six and a half inch drivers to show you something. The size of a subwoofer is magnet and is basket and the overall girth has very little to do. It's not the be all end all, very little to do with performance. Here we have a 2020 G1 six and a half subwoofer. Here we have a 2019 G2. G2 6.5 subwoofer. This is the lower series in comparison to the G2. All right. As you can see, the G1 is bigger. They both use the sleeve lot the same kind of cutout, though. 5.9 inches. But now let's look, into the, let's look into the specs of the subs, and you'll see a vast difference. First of all, right here, if you look closely, you will see that the spider pack on the G2 is thicker than the spider pack on the G1. They're closer together here, farther apart here, all right? The surround is taller on the G1 than it is on the G2. But yet and still, this one has 15 millimeters one way X Max. This one has 10. The close together spiders here only allows for FS of 58, 59. The FS here is 52. The motor is larger on the G1, but the force acted upon the voice coil in the G1 is only 7 BL or Tesla meters is beat to 7. Whereas in the G2, the force acted upon the voice coil from the motor is 16.7. Almost 17. Twice as much. Smaller motor, but twice as much force is being excursion in the gap on the voice coil than in the larger subwoofer in the G1. In the larger visually subwoofer in the G in the G1. Okay? Another difference. Uh oh yeah. The yeah, we need to we definitely need to look at that. The I'm looking at the boxes right here, gentlemen. The the grams here is 77. This is lighter. This is lighter coil. This is I mean this is a, a, all all the soft parts together is 77 grams. Possibly move so you don't need that much force to move it. Maybe that's why it has a low BL. The the gram total grams of the soft parts here is 94 so this is heavier than this so that that explains where the base will be deeper and that's a give and take the base will be deeper on the g2 than it will be on the g1 because you got more mass of the cone okay it's, it's trade-offs with these these ts parameters that you got you got you got you have to look at both of them have low vast uh two so they work in small enclosures both of them uh the QTS, the overall QTS is in 0.6, so they're both optimized for a portal enclosure more so than a vent enclosure, I mean a sealed enclosure. But you can see the size has nothing to do with the actual parameters. You would say this is going to hit hard, this is going to throw further, this is going to handle more power, this only handles 300 watts, this handles twice as much power. But it's visually smaller. This is a 2020. G1. This is a 2019, but when the G2 comes out for 2020, it's just going to have the same cone. Well, it's, it's going to have the same cone as this one. 
It's just going to be a G2. Now, maybe they may increase the magnet size to make it, I don't know, maybe visually look bigger than the G1 because of this G2. And it's possible they could do that. But technically, just on paper, this one trumps the larger one. The point I'm trying to make here is do not judge subwoofers strictly by size. You will fail. You need to look at the TS parameters and look at the ones that matters the most to you. They're all, it's all a give and take. You give something up here to gain something here. This is more efficient than this one. You had, I say you had a raw Fosgate uh, 750.1. If you had a raw Fosgate 750.1, then you would want to put two, and you want to run two. Which two would you run? Would you run the 300 watts RMS or the 750? Me personally, I would run two of these because I would reach the X Max quicker. They reach the X Max at 300 RMS per the manufacturer. To reach the 15 millimeters X Max. On the G2, I would need 750 watts. If all I have to give is 750 watts, I could never push them to their full capacity. They will not move as much air as the G1 would with its 10 millimeters, because both of those would really, together would move 20 millimeters of air would be movement, whereas you would not get that with this. You only get 15 millimeters of movement. That's just break down something you can understand. 20 millimeters against 15. Two moving 20 and one moving 15 because the wattage is not enough. This one subwoofer can handle twice as much power as this one can. So you need to factor all that in when you're trying to select what you're going to use. The efficiency, how much power you need to reach that X-Max. Do you have too much power? All these got to be considered. When you pick out a subwoofer for your application, don't get caught up in size. Don't get caught up in gimmicks. Read the parameters. Ask questions. Read, and you'll be amazed. Size means absolutely nothing when it comes to subwoofers. You will be amazed. Case in point, Neo, Neo motor subs have way more force like upon the voice cords than their large ferrite motors. They can handle way more power they're also significantly smaller than their ferrite cousins. Size doesn't mean anything when it comes to subwoofers. It's, well, it does, but it's not to be all in all. It's just one thing to look at. All right?